Hello everyone, my name is Mirna and on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, we want to welcome you to Mindalia live streaming, where thousands of people around the world gather to see the lectures and interviews organized daily by Mindalia TV. Today with us, Angel Rebo, CEO, consultant, TV host, international public speaker, and president of the Wisdom of Kids Foundation is going to be interviewing Midori Veridi. She is a published author of Secrets to Kick-Ass Marriage, and she is a show host and a professional speaker. They are going to be talking to it today about the science of personality. Before starting with them, we want to remind you that Mindalia is a nonprofit organization. Our mission is to share information that can help raise the level of consciousness around the world, and you can help us. How? Subscribing to our channel if you haven't done it yet, leaving us a positive comment down this video or sharing the video with someone that you know that is going to benefit with the content that we're going to be talking here today. Also, while we are live streaming, we have the active chat, the screen that you're going to be seeing here. Through there, you can interact with us. You can ask your questions. We just please ask you to follow the format, word question in caps, the place where you're seeing us from, and the actual question at the end of the interview. Midori will be kind and answer them. Last but not least, Mindalia broadcast from Monday to Friday in Portuguese through Mindalia Televisão, in English through Mindalia TV, as you know, and in Spanish through Mindalia Televisión. We want to invite you to visit us in our different platforms if you know the languages. Find out what we are sharing there is information as beautiful and as interesting as the one, as the one you see daily in Mindalia TV. We also want to invite you to collaborate with your own valuable content. For that, you have to go to our website, click the link on the top of the page. Uh, you're going to find it. It says collaborate with Mindalia. That link is going to take you to a form that you can fill out. So our technical team can contact you and it'll be you just like Midori sharing valuable information through the different platforms of Mindalia. I'm not going to delay this any further. Thank you. Welcome to Mindalia live streaming, guys. The screen is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mirna, for the introduction. And thank you very much, Midori, for being here with us today. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me, Angel. It's such a pleasure to be here. Oh, my God. When I was listening to uh, Mirna's introduction and I heard the title of your book, oh, my God, like, room energy. A kick-ass marriage. <laughs> oh my right? God! I think that most of us have have you know have had uh, uh, or has had a, a, a marriage experience. Let's put it this way. Maybe still ongoing. Maybe not ongoing. But is is it true that personality has a lot to see with a kick-ass marriage, Midori? Oh, it's huge. It's a huge part of it. And you know, the interesting part, Angel, is when we first meet that person that we fall in love with those little personality um, parts that maybe we shouldn't be aligning with as much. We, we kind of ignore because we're in love and that person's so cute and we don't really realize the full extent of how that can affect our relationships later on. And so, yes, it absolutely is a huge part of any relationship. And could could we do something? Let's say we are looking for a you know for a partner, um, it, because again it, that's something that happens in our lives very often, or has happened in our lives very often. Or we are surrounded by people that would like to have maybe someone that they don't have with, or they don't have anybody with now today. So, what do you think that there's a way to guess the personality of someone, even before start to talk with that person? <gasps> There is. It's really rather cool. And it's what I'm talking about, just so we're all clear, is something called the DISC Behavioral Assessment. It's D-I-S-C. And each of those letters stand for a personality style. And we're all kind of a mix of these different personality styles. Should I go into kind of a brief, brief Yeah, um, you can. Absolutely. You can. Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, someone is a high D when it's a person who tends to move really quickly. They talk fast. They might be more in your face. D stands for direct or dominant. Often these people are the boss. They um, want to be in charge and they will show it. You kind of see this like, like an eagle. Think of an eagle when you think of the D. For an I... We, we 
equate that to a parrot. I'm going to I'm going to put an analogy of, of a bird for each of these because I think it helps us remember them more. So the high eyes are the parrots. They love to talk. They are our social butterflies. They also tend to move very quickly. Um, they may be in your face. They are, they tend to be um, a little more indirect. They will beat around the bush a little bit more, but you can tell who they are. They're very easy to tell because they are the one who walks into a room and you see their presence because they are talking to everybody. Um, for the S, that is the person who is quieter. They're going to move slower. They are going to talk slower. They are your support person. They don't want to create any type of waves. They don't, they are the people who like peace. So we call them the doves. Think of a dove when you think of someone who's a high S. And then for the C, these are our conscientious people. These are the ones who are very analytical. They will move slow. They will only speak when they have something really important to say. They are the ones that will come in. Their colors are perfect. Their hair is perfect. They're very put together. Um, and they tend to be more serious. So you can almost always tell them they are your typical stereotypical is what I should say, stereotypical bookkeepers and analytical people. Um, that's how you can tell a high C. So that kind of gives you an idea. And we think of them as the owls. Does that make and, sense? Oh, absolutely. All the sense of the world. I have mm -hmm. so many questions. I mean, that, that was a beautiful explanation. So number one, what type are you? I am a very high I. So I'm the, the social one and right below that I'm a high D. So that's why I enjoy running businesses. Mm, yeah. I would have guessed if I had to guess, I would have say a D, but you know, uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm not that uh, fond of uh, these uh, still I've taken the, the DISC, the disc uh, mm -hmm. test a few, a few times, but I'll, I'll go back and look at it <laughs> to see what it back. shows exactly what it shows for me. So uh, personality and disc. How does that determine how we are going to get with our lives, the personality that we have? Right. So the person who is like the high D, again, they need to be in a role where they are dominant. In your relationship, they are going to want to be dominant most of the time. And there's, and I'll explain some differences there, but in general, that's what you're going to want to know. Someone who's a high I, if you stick them into an office all by themselves, they are going to probably go insane. It is not a good place for them to be. They need to be out in with mixing with people. They're very good collaborative collaborators. They're also very good motivational people. So they're great on a team. They can be a fantastic leader as long as they have a support person to keep them in line. Um, and then for the S, they are your support person. They are fantastic at helping get the job done and doing what needs to be done. Maybe not what everyone wants to do, but they will do what needs to be done because that's where they feel the most comfortable. Just in general, they don't want to be the leader. Does that make sense? Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And then for the high C, they don't want to be a leader either, but they're very task oriented. So if you give them a task, they're going to get it done, but you need to give them um, deadlines because they will second guess everything and it can take them a long, long time because they want to be perfect is very, very important for them to make sure all T's are dotted. All I's are, are dotted, or I'm sorry, all T's are lined and then all I's are dotted um, because they want everything to turn out correctly and perfect from the, from the beginning. So, um, so you can kind of see where there can be tension between the different personality types. Someone who's a high D very fast paced, mixed with someone who's a high C, they're going to have some challenges because the high D moves very quickly. They want it done yesterday. And the high C wants all the details. They want to know everything before they get started. So that can really cause some conflict. And the other thing with the high D and high C, they tend to not be people oriented. They're, they're task oriented. So that means that a high D is going to come to you and say, Angel, why did you not get that done? I expected that yesterday and I can't believe you didn't get it done. 
<laughs> so they don't quite polish it as much. And so that can be a little challenging for some personality types. So that's just kind of giving you an idea. So whether it's in business, whether it's with your kids, whether it's in a friendship or in a marriage, you can see the different personality types and where you can kind of round it out a little bit more. You can become more, you can acquiesce to the other personality types so that it becomes more calm and they will listen to you and, and respond to you better by understanding the different per personality types. What in your life, Midori, took you to where you are today doing what you do? Yeah, as a marriage coach, yeah. Well, that's quite a story. Um, a number of years ago, it was my birthday. And I remember waking up and just feeling like I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to move. I actually wanted to like pull the covers over my head and hide indefinitely. I was, I just had like this heavy feeling. And what was going on was I realized it was kind of my midlife stage and I hadn't, I wasn't where I wanted to be. My husband and I had had a company for a number of years at that point, which I, Angel, I hated it from the tips of my hair to the bottom of my feet. I hated it with a passion and I just hadn't accomplished the things that I had set out to accomplish from when I was younger. And I think there's just a deep sense of regret of a feeling of being stuck, not knowing how to get out of where I was. Um, and not knowing where to turn. And that was a horrible feeling. And now that I've, I do what I do, I, I see so many people who go through the same struggle. And it's very, very common, whether you're a female or a male doesn't matter. And so anyway, I, I did finally get out of bed, but mentally I was pushed down. I was kind of, um, in this depression for about six months to the point where I got so sick of myself that I'm like, okay, that's it. Time to change this. I can't stand myself any longer. And I really started deep diving into ways to figure what out, what was going on, why I felt the way I felt, what to do, trying to get back some of that control. Cause I felt like I had zero control and, um, just did a lot of self development did a lot of re tons of research, started going out to some conferences and, um, and reading a lot. And what I learned through all of that was techniques to help switch our mindset. Kind of that, I'm, you know, I'm sure you've heard of this, this term neuroplasticity and it's this brain science. And what that means it's it's, oh my gosh, I'm a super geek about, about this concept. But what it means is that through our mind, we can change everything that we believe about ourselves and about the world. That's where we can get the control. And that's where we can get the confidence to do the things that maybe we thought were never, ever possible. And so through all this, I gained that part of it. But also I gained the knowledge that whatever I did next had to be really important. It had to be important to my core beliefs. And I had to have a passion for it. And I had to be good at it. It had to be something that was in my zone of genius, which means that zone of genius, it means that that's what comes naturally for you. You don't have to work hard for it. So long story short, that's what led me to becoming a marriage coach and helping others to create a healthier and happy, happier relationship and family. And so yeah, that, that's, that's the story of how I got here. And how, how what kind of, uh, let's say, what kind of marriages or people do you tend to attract to your business today? You know, it's interesting that you're asking me that. I attract all different types, but they tend to be those who want more out of life, who really um, have kind of that passion, but they don't know how to release it. They don't know how to really kind of get it to this level where they can achieve the goals that they want together. Um, so that tends to be the people that I attract. Also, the other thing that I notice is a lot of a lot of the couples that come to me, one or the other partner already has a foot out the door. 
meaning that one of them is thinking of divorce already. Unfortunately, I wish that they came to me earlier because I could avoid all those painful um, experiences. But that tends to be the, the pattern that I see. Awesome. And what would you say, so, you know, um, I, I, I don't know exactly the statistics uh, mm -hmm. in, in America today, but my guess is that the, you know, the average uh, of, uh, of, you know, couples that break uh, is, is, is high. So, you know, there's, there's, there's conflict inside, you know, between, you know, male and women in, in those relationships. So what would you say is the, like the number one issue that you would say that's mainly the reason why, you know, those so many people break up today? What would be that issue that they come to you and say, please, Midori, please help us with this? Yeah. So whenever they come to me, it's, it's communication. That's the number one thing that they say. But let me just say this. I agree. Communication is, is a huge part of it. It has to be strong. But there's something that comes before communication to cause those problems. And that's what happens is we can know everything about. We can be communication experts. But if our frustration and our anger towards our partner is so strong that we don't care, we just want to stay in that angry, mad place, the knowledge that we have, we're not going to use it. So that's why we start there. We start with kind of learning, bring using our, our mindsets and giving my clients tools on how to kind of change our patterns of how we interact with our, with our partner and seeing them from a more positive and coming from a more positive place so that we can learn how to communicate better, but also want to use it. Make sense. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely it makes sense. I was already thinking. Okay, so those two pieces are are moving. Maybe they don't. They're not having the level of communication that they should. How, how can you fix those? You know, those two things that you just mentioned. What's what's the right way? What's the what's kind of the mindset that you try to instill to put on those mind? You know, on those uh, brains uh, uh, or attitudes of of the of, of of the couple when they come to you when you start working with them, Midori. Yeah, well, we first do an assessment and we see where they are and it really points out their biggest blind spots, what things that they don't even realize. And, um, and, and I can usually figure it out like that because I've been doing this for a while, but also the assessments that we use are so scientific and they're so well done that uh, it makes it easy. So we start with that, but generally what we'll do is we will start working on on changing patterns, behavioral patterns and belief patterns that have developed that are unhealthy for the relationship. And so I give them tools on that, exercises to do that um, can change immediately. And so we work on that part. And then we'll start working on things such as DISC and noticing, you know, oh, so my, oh, let me just give you an example. I have a couple Please. where, yeah, where the husband is a very high, high S, like almost off the charts S, and he has no, there's no D there at all. So he likes to keep the peace a little bit too much. So he never spoke up. The problem is his wife is very similar. She also is a high S, but more of a, she also has the high I, so she's very social but they never discussed the problems going on in their relationship until one partner, the wife, decided this isn't for me. I'm sick of this. So I'm dealing with you know with with this couple who they don't talk. So it's like okay, let's let's kind of open up the doors here and let's see what's going on. And what we had to what I pointed out to them is is that both of them need to start stirring the pot. It's okay. They need to be talking about the issues that are bothering them so that they can deal with them. They can't keep on hiding from them. So we really have worked on changing those patterns and helping them get comfortable because it's hard. It's hard. That's a comfort zone that is hard to break, but getting them comfortable on saying the things that, that they are unhappy with that bother them and helping the other person address it without getting their feelings hurt and talking um, in a way that they're both more receptive. So that's what we're doing. And it's, it's a process, and, but they are making huge strides. And so now what's great is that those blind spots, they didn't realize that they knew they needed to communicate. They knew that they had issues, but they didn't know how to communicate and they didn't know how to get their message across because they had never, ever done it. 
And so we really had to start at the bare bottom, but the strides that they have made, it's been about three months is huge. They're talking again. They're listening to one another. They're both making changes because they're both committed to their relationship. So that's one example. Great. I love the example. Is it possible to know where those blind spots or those beliefs came from? Is it possible to know that? The, yeah, the blind spots are difficult, but for the belief systems, yes, almost all of them come from our childhood. So for, for many, if you were in a situation where maybe it wasn't okay to speak up, you got in big fat trouble. And so you learned it's better. I'm safer if I just keep my mouth shut and I stay in the background. I'm not the person out in front um, and I'm not stirring up anything. And I'm the person who will try to make mom or dad happy so that they don't get upset. So it starts from there. Um, and that can be with everything. You know, also it can be if you felt like you had no power when you were younger and you want that power so much. So maybe you become way over the top dominating kind of personality because that's where you have your strength and the fear that you had from a childhood was not having that strength and that not having that power and being being diminished to nothing so you hold on tight to being the dominating person so that's where that happens and it's okay we all have these things but it's a, it's important to become aware of it that's why i love the disc assessment because it's scientific it's not a psychologist coming in and saying well here's what i think it's very very scientific and it's very accurate and um, and it, it shows you where those spots are, so the blind spots, so that you can be aware of them and you can start working on them slowly. Uh, hearing that um, some or a few or, or many limiting beliefs come from our childhood and the way that we 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 grow up, uh, we grew up. Um, would it be possible? I don't know if that's going to make sense, but you are the expert. So would it make sense, like, to change something? during our childhood education that would allow us to have more you know like fruitful relationships when we grow up yeah so are you talking about education system itself yeah i'm talking about is that is that something that is that something that as parents we could do with our kids so that when they grew up their relationships with their partners would be easier yeah. And again, what I love about the disc is it's not just about your, your marriage. In fact, it's, it was designed for businesses. <laughs> it was designed for the corporate world, which it's used extensively, but it's for anything. It's any type of relationship. So yes, we do disc for children. And I love it. I feel as though in this day and age, it is so important to kind of shift the old way of teaching. We need to be stepping into something more modern, something that's going to serve our kids better because the world has changed. And so by giving them the DISC assessment and having someone who's trained, talk to them about it and talk to the parents too. So the parents understand their children a little bit more too, because the way that we parent, if we have a child, most of us who have kids, we understand our kids can be totally opposite ends of the spectrum, even though they were raised exactly the same, right? So the, I learned this with my kids. I, my, I have two boys, totally opposite. One, if you are stern with him and you're like really vocal, he will kind of crumble a little bit and he's no longer listening. And he's just thinking, oh my gosh, I did so many wrong things. And it's, as a parent, it was, it was painful to watch. Um, and then with my other son, you can be in his face yelling and he just doesn't care. He could care less. <laughs> so, you know, they're just di different. Um, they're, they fall in different places on the disc. So once I took the disc, I'm like, oh, that explains it all. So I learned how to become a better parent and communicate to them in a language where they listened and they didn't feel diminished. They felt empowered. And, um, and so, yeah, it's absolutely something that's so important for families to help them build up this kind of this muscle of understanding where who, what how they like to be talked to where they come from but also understanding where other people come from too and what would you personally teach your kids to make sure that they when they grow up you know they have like you know uh fulfilling relationships yeah so overall i think to have a fulfilling relationship you need to be confident and secure in who you are 
And so getting back to, to my kids, I took, I gave my son the, I gave both my sons the disc assessment, but for my older son, it showed that, um, let me back up, let me back up for a second. So on the disc assessment, there's two measurements. One is your natural disc score. The other one is called the adapted disc score. And what that means is your natural one is when you're super comfortable, like maybe when you're at home and you're and or with your best friends and you're just being who you are and you behave that way. That's what comes naturally for you. That's what how you want your life to be ideally, right? The adapted can be different than the natural. And the adapted can be like where you are in your work environment. It can also be where you are in your marriage. So if you're not in a healthy marriage, your adapted score may be a lot different than your natural. When I see that, I know that there's big problems going on and there's a certain percentage that you want to look for. So when I was looking at my sons, I noticed that he was at a certain level on the natural and then on the adapted, he was at a much different level. And so we talked about it and he thought about it for a while and he came back and he said, you know, mom, I feel like I always, this is when he was in college, I always have to prove myself. So he was on his natural graph. He was a lower C. The, 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 the C's, the high C's are the ones that make sure everything's perfect. So on his adaptive graph, he was way high on the high C and that's tough. That's tough. And so I understood what he was talking about. So the beauty of that was that I'm his mom. And so he trusts me and we could talk about that situation. And just, I gave him the confidence that right now, you know what, it's, it's okay. You're developing who you are. You're trying to really prove yourself and prove that you are capable of these things and you're proving it to yourself as well. So it's important, but know that you can't stay here on the adaptive graph because you're never going to be happy. So it's okay at this moment, but let's just make sure that you're doing the steps that you need to do to, to be, make it more natural. And so anyway, we just went through this whole cycle and, um, and I think he left feeling better, feeling more empowered and under and clear as to what was going on. So when he had those feelings of disconnection in his body and in his mind, he understood what it was from. Kids are so present in, in the lives of the parents, right? I mean, they are our kids forever and they were children forever. They never stop being our children. So we, we always care about them. We always think, even with regret, right? We might go back to the childhood and we could have done so many more things, right? And I think that we, all of us, we obviously we we make some evolution in our lives and we learn more and we're more experienced. And I guess every single one of your clients or your couple clients also brings something new to you and to your life. Is that right? Oh my gosh. That I learned so much from my couples, so much just hearing them say little things. Um, but yeah, they it's 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 awesome. It's really truly you know, for those who are listening to the show right now, who are maybe in a career that they're not feeling fulfilled, I so encourage you to, to figure out what your passion is, figure out what your zone of genius is and find a way to take the steps to get to where you want. Because once you do, or once you start seeing that you're making that forward momentum, it's such an enriching place to be. And Angel, you're doing it. You, you live this lifestyle and I don't know if you always have, I know I have not always lived there. And so to be able to compare the two, it's like, just do it. Just think, find that coach who can help you get to there because it's such a more rewarding place to be. So yes, I would not change anything in my life right now. I love what I'm doing. I love that I can help these couples and these families become healthier and happier. And hopefully for the long term that these kids grow up and um, they have healthier and happier families too. Obviously, very often you mentioned that before, sometimes there's someone in the couple, they, they go to you when they're really close, they're really close to like breaking that up forever. Mm -hmm. And you and you fix that, uh, or at least you, you, try to, you try to do it. Very often when that's, that's happening, the kids are the ones that suffer the most, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And um, not necessarily, the parents not necessarily understand or are aware or are noticing of what that represents in the kids' lives. So what's the right way to handle conflict inside a couple, knowing that the kids are perceiving it? What's the best way to, in order to you know, minimize that negative impact on the, on the, kids, uh, on the kids' life? 
Yeah. Good question. Great question. You know, it's, it's some people say, Oh, don't ever fight in front of the kids. I don't always agree with that. I think it's a reality. And I think that when you argue, I mean, that's, that's one thing is that you, you want to try to learn the techniques to have disagreements, but not diminish the other person, you know, to, have, to, to have disagreements, agreements, but do it with respect. And if you slip up and maybe say some things in the heat of passion that you regret learning to have the grace to apologize and also learning to, to understand that you can, you should be explaining it to your kids. I am so sorry, son, but mom was really, really upset last night and I did not handle that well. I have apologized to your dad and I didn't mean the things I said and, you know, and just explain it to them because it's, it's reality. And, but if it's a, if it's a consistent thing, if it's a thing where you notice that you're arguing all the time and it's not healthy arguing and it's really causing a problem, get some help, just get some help. And the quicker, the better so that you can start changing that pattern as soon as possible. Uh, could you share with the audience on Mindalia TV where where can we or where can they find you online, please, Midori? Yes, of course. So my website is midoriverity.com and it's M-I-D-O-R-I, V as in Victor, E-R-I, T as in Tom, Y.com. And from there, I have free resources. I have um, assessments you can take on there that are all, it's all free. And I have a, you know, you can see interviews that I've done that may pertain to whatever is a conflict in your relationship, whether it's about intimacy or um, the, the, t or communication or the thought of divorce or, or creating a more thriving relationship and lifestyle too. We have all those sources there for you for free. So yeah, thank you for asking angel, but that's, that's where they can go. And that's the best way to contact you. Yep. You can go right there and there's a contact me button on there. And, um, and we respond within 24 hours. I know exactly. I was going to say the exact same thing. I know that you are very responsive and that you get a lot of questions and obviously you are, you have to, you have to give a lot of answers. What's that? What would you say is that answer that you are the most happy to give to the people that ask you questions? Oh, what's an answer I love to give? I to love give. when a yeah. couple comes to me and they say they want to re-energize the relationship and create a more thriving, exciting path. That gets me motivated because I can so show them how to do that. So that's 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 the thing that I enjoy the most, probably. Awesome. And what is what is next? What's what's the future of Midori? Uh, in mm -hmm. this world, because you, you help a ton of people, a ton of couples, you've changed the lives of so many people. What's, what's your future? What, what is your brightness going through? To yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Go. you and I are both part of um, what's called the Evolutionary Business uh, Council. And that's all about making a massive impact in the world. And so that's what I'm all about. So there may be a TV show coming out soon um, where we will be dealing with this, these issues and reaching way more people. I have an online show now, um, but we are talking about making it a much bigger um, viewing and, and getting in front of a lot more people. And so that may be on the horizon. That's exciting. I, I was having I was having having chills when you were saying it. So that means that it's 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 a reality. It's there. It's done. It's there. It's, yeah, it's done, Midori. You. It's done. It's done. Yeah. It's going to be extremely successful. Amazing. Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy I asked you the question. Awesome. Yeah. So let me let me go to a few questions that we have here. So first question: How can we convince our partner to attend? marriage therapy that's a great question oh okay yeah that's a really good question so i try to make it into something a little bit lighter i have a i have events called couples and bubbles and it's for that exact reason and um and what it's about is we do trainings there but at the very end we celebrate with wine or champagne and we have snacks and so it's an easier um thing to step into for those who don't happen to be in California. Also, you can do it where maybe it's a, a retreat, something where um, it's 
it's it's more of a date type of thing that you can do. Another easy approach, people like the online coaching because it's not out in public. It's more private. Um, there's something about being in your own, the comfort of your own home. And so that has been very, very successful as far as couples who were one of them's like, eh, I don't know about this. I I'm not buying in, but those are some different angles that you can try. Excellent. Next question. Did, do you ever bring the kids in into a meeting with a couple? Mm. You know, I, I have not brought them in. We have done separately the disc coaching, the disc assessment for the kids, and then we'll talk, bring the parents in too, and we'll talk about all of that part of it. So, uh, yeah, I guess actually from that standpoint, yes. And that's incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful because you see parents go, oh my God, you can see in their heads, they're going, oh my gosh, I've been doing it wrong. I've been doing it wrong. And it's, no fault. We thought we, all of us parents have guilt, right? It's just part, it's part of being a parent, but we don't know what we don't know. And that's the beauty of doing a disc assessment is that it's, it, again, it's not coming from someone pointing out um, what they feel you're doing wrong. It's coming from a scientific standpoint. And it's showing these, these, these little alterations that you wouldn't be able to see from a blind eye without being trained. So that's, that's, in, insanely powerful and life-changing it's so true when you mention guilt it's so true i have to jump into this question because i mean can that guilt build up in some way that actually it's going to interfere interfere excuse me in their relationship yeah i actually have i have a client who um the parents divorced and he came to me because he wanted to repair some mental things in his mind and become kind of step into a new person and he's an attorney. And when the parents divorced, one stayed in New York, the other one went to California. So opposite ends of the world or of the United States. And, um, and the mother took the daughter to California and the dad kind of disconnected. And he has so much guilt. Now the daughter's grown up and he just has so much guilt that he overcompensates and he does not, they have repaired the relationship somewhat, but he overcompensates to try to make up for that guilt that he has. And it's not the healthiest way that he's doing it. So we're working on that. We're working on that. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. So that, that can happen. So that definitely, that, that definitely interferes or can interfere in the relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we, again, the guilt is normal. Um, and it's actually, I, I think it's unavoidable, quite, quite frankly. Yeah, maybe maybe the concept of maybe that's another that's time for another conversation. But maybe the concept of why why those why do we have kids? What 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 do kids represent in our lives? What our up, up to which point are we responsible for their lives? I think those are questions that probably those are big questions. Yeah, and, and I, okay, let me just revisit my show that's coming up because I think you and I both are very focused on children. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> care, care very much about the health of children. And I always have been since I was a little girl, um, children who are at risk, ch children who were abused, that, um, that has been at my heart. And so with my show, one thing that we're going to be doing, we're going to have different segments. And one of them is we're going to be bringing on a behavioral, um, a, ch a ch children's behavioral expert once in a while for segments. And I know this woman and, you know, I was, I was in her office and I was just talking with her. Um, she works for a company called, or an or a nonprofit called child parent Institute, which I'm a board member. And so I was talking to her and we we're talking about three-year-olds and she brought up the point of, you know, you want them to clean up, but they're not listening to you. And, and I remember this vividly, my boys would not clean up and it just about drove me mad. And so I would take toys away. I would put them on timeouts. And she said, it's because they're not there yet. They don't understand that concept. And so a better way to do it is to make it into a game. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. So there's just so many, but I had so much guilt from that of, of raising my kids that way. Cause I just didn't know how to break through to them. So through the show, we're going to be having, it's, it's an entertainment show, but we are going to be having very important conversations uh, with easy, simple things that we can do to become better parents and to recognize things that, that we were unaware of to help us be more successful. So kudos yeah. to you. What the, I mean, exactly. As you said, I'm, 
I'm extremely <laughs> mindful and concerned about the kids and the future of uh, kids. And so, I mean, awesome, great. That, yeah. that, that's great news for so many people. Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you'll be on the show one of these days. Oh, too, thank you. So. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, thank you. You're so generous. <laughs> Let's go to the next question. How do you identify the point in which a couple is not going to make it? Oh, that's a great mm -hmm. question. Yeah. So that's a, that is a great question because not every couple is meant to be together. And so I, I can't make the decision for them. I um, can help them understand certain things and I can give them tools, but, but one kind of guideline is if you are fighting constantly and you're not listening to one another and you're causing yourselves more grief than happiness and it's going on for a long, long period of time. Again, this has to come from you because people can, there's different ranges on this and there's different ways to fight back and make it and be successful. So it's not something where any therapist or psychologist can make that decision for you unless there's abuse going on, then that's a, that's a get out. Um, but the beauty of, of this, what we're talking about right now is that there are ways to disconnect from one another with more grace and to keep the family intact and to not have so much resentment and anger towards one another and to actually raise your happiness levels, each of you, um, more quickly than than staying in that that marriage where you just are not um where it's not healthy so hopefully awesome. that answers their question oh absolutely absolutely thank you next question is separation sometimes the best option yes yes and i'll be honest i will uh, this is one thing i've been married or i've been with the same guy for 31 years married for 25 years and um one thing that i say is we press the reset button on our relationship and we have a number of times and um and it's we're extremely happy but i will be honest and i will say a couple of years ago we got to a point where we just were arguing a lot and I couldn't get, I couldn't break through to him. And he probably felt like he couldn't break through to me. And so I left, I left for a couple of days just to kind of break that pattern of arguing because it wasn't getting us anywhere. And I couldn't figure out another way, even though I'm a marriage coach, I couldn't figure out another way to, to get through to him without these big eruptions. So I went away for a few days, um, really worked on myself and and he was able to reflect on his self and then we were able to come back and have an honest calm conversation and figure out what we needed to do and it was it was almost like a pill that we took or an injection um, because it was that what we needed at that point to so that we could both be receptive to what we we're both saying and to actually listen to one another once again so yes i do think separation can be a very great thing there are kind of rules to it but yes it can be awesome next question how does the uh, how do the parents how does the parents excuse me marriage dynamics affect the children in their future relationships you're the role model you're the role model if you're constantly arguing and fighting and saying d disrespectful things to your partner, your children learn that's the norm. That's what's normal. Um, I have a, a, a client who came to me and it was interesting. He came to me, he, this is after his children were in high school and he got a call and it was from the principal who said, you can't be doing the things that you're doing to your kids. It's abusive. And he didn't know that he was spanking him. And I think he was doing it a little bit uh, more than just a, a spank. Um, and he didn't realize that because that's the way his parents taught him to, that's the way he was raised. So he thought that's what you did. He didn't know. He didn't know any better. And that's, that's why we're doing the show. That's why I do what I do to help people understand what they don't realize because there's so much, all of us can learn from each other. Um, but yeah, so your kids are watching and they're learning from you. So be a good role model. Excellent. Thank you. And the last question we are seeing in newer generations, fear of commitment. Mm -hmm. Where is that coming from? I think it's probably from watching their parents, you know, with a 50% <laughs> divorce rate, kids don't want to go through that. Um, I mean, it could be for so many different reasons. Now we are in a, an age where we're, 
working so hard. It's not um, dynamics. Family dynamics have changed. There's a lot more demand on people, on individuals to be successful and to, especially here in the United States, I'm not sure, um, you know, Angel, but I think for, for a lot of places, that's the way it is. And um, yeah, so it's hard. It's hard to balance it all and to do it well and have time to spread ourselves out so that we can be focusing on a relationship and focusing on success and focusing on having um, children that grow up healthy. And so I think we're dealing with some dynamics um, in modern dynamics in the world that are Excellent. causing that. Yeah. We, we always like to obviously make um, our conversation, you know, as, as easy as like a lot of people can benefit from a specific pieces of advice, something that they can take away for their daily lives. Yeah. And it, it can help them like now. <laughs> so what would be that piece of advice that you would like to share with our audience? So that, yeah. maybe, you know, that just something that's coming to you right now that you think you, you should share with them. You know, it's something so simple. It always is so simple, right? It's, it's the simple things that change our world. But it's something I call the gratitude attitude. And I talk about this on my shows. I end every show with this. And what it means is that every morning, wake up with this idea of gratitude attitude before you even get out of bed. Keep your eyes closed and think of what you're grateful for in your family, in your husband, in your career, simple things such as your car, the fact that maybe you have a car that can get you back and forth from work, come from that place of, wow, this world's pretty darn good and I'm pretty darn lucky and I have a partner who I am lucky to have because maybe he made me dinner last night or he helped with the kids or, or whatever. Just simple little things. But when you start your day with this gratitude attitude, it helps you be more positive. It helps you be more happy. And it helps others see that in you too. So they are more positive towards you. So it's, it's a very impactful little, little tool to put in your pocket. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing. Could you remind us again, where can we and how can we find you online so we can contact you right away? Yes, absolutely. So just go to my website, midoriverity.com. Excellent. It. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. What a blessing. Thank you. I mean, we've learned so much uh, and you're, you're, you're a pleasure to, to, to talk to and to talk with. So thank you. Thank you so much, Midori, to be with, with us. Oh today. my gosh. Thank you for having me, Angel. You know that I adore you and I Likewise. so enjoy sharing this <laughs> message. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and again, this is uh, Angel Rebo with Mindalia TV. Thank you very much for being with us today and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.